chapter of this chapter on ajax communication with asp.net core razor pages we shall discuss how ajax can be used to send and receive data from razor pages we shall write a simple application for that so let us see the objective of this tutorial this is a form with one input box and a submit button when the user posts the form a please wait feedback ticker will be shown to the user and when the ajax request returns from the server an error message will be shown if the validation fails on the server side for example in this case the user didn't type anything and submitted it the server gave a validation failure and has sent an error message because this failure took place otherwise if there is success if a valid data goes our simple project will have a server that will echo back the same input which will be displayed as you are seeing here in this case json response okay the same input will be echoed back if everything is sent okay and the server validation passes our objective is to start with the simplest project and that is what we are doing in this case so let us get started create an asp.net core project with an empty template and reach something like this this is the solution explorer this is the project locate the startup.cs file and double click to open it so that we can configure the support for razor pages this is the file that will open I have already completed the file so I will explain the code here. This is the startup class, this is the configure services method. Add this line to the configure services method. It will enable razor pages for our project. This is the first thing that you have to do and after that this is the configure method. There you have to add this statement endpoints.map razor pages this will map razor pages as the endpoints for the incoming http requests this all that you are seeing in fact this also has to be added use routing so this all you are seeing these two parts along with this part these are all the boilerplate code that will you will always need when working with razor pages so this is the basic configuration that you have to first of all do don't forget this one Next let us add razor pages to host our form and handle the ajax communication. For that add a folder called pages. This is a folder called pages. The spellings are very important. Keep the spellings exactly the same otherwise things will not work. Add a folder called pages and then right click this folder to add a new razor page called index. Then locate the cshtml file pages folder it will contain index.cshtml file and also index.cshtml.cs file locate this file and double click to open it this is the razor page where we will add our form this is the file that opens and these are the directives that you will see these are three directives at the top add page directive add model add tag helper these directives are the boilerplate code that should be written at the top of any razor page like add model directive it connects the backing class to this razor page and this is required for the proper functioning of the input forms on this page then after that we see a span this span will be used to show the please wait ticker this one this span color red and id is given so that we can use javascript to put the correct text into this please wait span this span can optionally be replaced by a hidden gif that has a rotating wheel so that you can turn this into a display uh, so that you can display this gif through javascript when you want to show something like please wait so that is up to you that is how you can do it but i will keep the things quite simple and this is the html form this is the markup for the HTML form that we will present to the user. You can see that this is a form and this is a label for name. This one. This is ASP input for name. This is the input text box. This form, this form will be connected to a bind property called name in the backing class. So ASP for will be the bind property 
and this is obviously this input so whatever you submit here will go to the name property on the backing class then this is the submit button on this form this one and this is the plain JavaScript code that can be used for posting the form so this is the plain JavaScript code that I have written I have not used jQuery you can do it at your own level I found the use of pure JavaScript to be very simple it is a very simple way if we follow the JavaScript so that is what I have done here so what we are doing is this is the uh, this is here we obtain the reference to the first form on this page document dot forms zero there may be many forms usually only one form is there so this can be used to obtain the reference to the form and after that form dot add event listener this will add a submit event listener when the form is submitted this function will be called event dot prevent default this will prevent the default submission action of the form the submit button will not submit to the server but the request will be routed through this function and this function just prevents that default action from taking place because we will be submitting sending the data through our own function through our own AGX mechanism so after this we write please wait dot inner HTML this will show the please wait message to the user because what follows next will be an asynchronous request and it will take some time to return back till that the user can see this please wait method and after this this is the fetch method this is a built-in method of JavaScript this will start the AJAX fetch request this is the action part of the action para uh, action uh, of the form and form dot action this is the first parameter this will be the URL to which we are going to post the data form dot action form action is equal to and if we have left empty by default this is the same page from the same URL from which we obtain this page so this will post the data to the same index page after this there is a comma then there is a JSON format of specifying more properties the first is method we write form dot method so whatever is the method attribute in our case our method attribute is post so the method of, form, of posting will be post body is new form data so what it will do is it will serialize the form inputs and after that that will be sent in the form of the body of this request so this will send the request to the server and after that this is fetch this will send the request to this URL and this hole it will send then there is a chain this is a catch what it will do it will catch any network exceptions and they will be logged here and if there are no network exceptions then we will read the response stream this response stream will be read and from the response stream the JSON that is coming from the server it will be decoded it will be parsed and after that there is another chain whatever data is parsed that will be set as inner HTML of the please wait so this is the basic functioning that is taking place fetch send catch then means parse and then process or do whatever you want with the data you receive so you start with the request and end with the data you can do whatever you want to do with this data so this is we'll explore more about this in our coming lectures also so this is the most basic thing that we have to do you can obtain the source code from me and then you can study it or you can just go through what I have shown it is not a big deal also okay next let us complete the backing class now come to the solution explorer and open the index.cshtml.cs file this is the backing class this is the file that opens and these are the using directives you can always review these using directives if you find some compilation errors on this page so this is the list that you can always come back to examine and 
this is your index model backing class and here public string name this is the bind property this bind property is bound to this input how it is bound if you see the razor markup we wrote input ASP for is equal to name this is this input is bound to this backing property on this form so when the user submits this data this name will contain the data that is coming from the server and this is the on post method this is the on post method which will be called when the data is submitted from the server and here the important thing is that your return type of the on post method must be JSON result this is the most important thing it cannot be action result this will be wrong it has to be JSON result if it is not JSON result then this on post method will never get called so this is the most important thing that you should remember after that I put a delay of 500 milliseconds an artificial delay so that it looks like an actual server so that you can really see that please wait uh, on that um, page when you have posted the data then this is a model validation that occurs this is a cheap type of validation that I'm doing I am only saying if some error has occurred then we will send an error response and if uh, we'll improve upon this in the coming lectures and after that uh, if no error occurs then whatever is the value received from the server that is actually sent back as ok response and then it is echoed back on the server on the uh, form that the user posted this please wait it will be replaced by this echo value so run the project to verify that it executes as expected type something submit and you will see the echo back remove this submit and you will see the error so this is the most basic uh, J, uh, sorry this AJAX communication that can be done we will see more examples of this in the coming tutorials thank you